We're talking Auburn football on the Arlads Football Network. We're going to be recapping week one against Alabama A&M. We're also going to be previewing week two against Cal. And then also taking a look overall at the depth chart for the Auburn Tigers this season, the Arlads depth chart, uh, to talk about key freshmen, transfers, the coaching staff, and more. As Brian Matthews covering the Auburn Tigers football team for – I don't know, somewhere between 23 and 25 years in that time, in that uh, range. That's tough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. He's yeah. been with Rivals for as, for almost as long as Rivals has been around. Now, let's just put it that way. So, Brian, it's great to have you on. And because uh, whenever we talk, it usually means it's football season, even though we, we got started a little after the football season started. But we planned that because we figured, well, maybe this would be a better opportunity to kind of see how things go a little bit uh, yeah. in the first game. And – uh, I know it's Alabama A and M, but what what I was able to take out of it myself uh, from an outsider is is that uh, a lot of the newcomers uh, really uh, uh, played a significant role. You had top recruit Cam Coleman with his first touchdown. Matter of fact, there were six touchdowns of thirty four yards or more, which is exciting for the fans. You right. had another true freshman, Perry Thompson, with a seventy yard reception touchdown you had another true freshman malcolm simmons with two touchdowns he had a reception and a block punt uh touchdown and then he had transfer from penn state wide receiver keandre lambert smith with two touchdowns including a 67 yarder and uh transfer sam jackson from cal the wide receiver with That's a 37 right. yarder so most of the touchdowns i believe everyone except hunter's touchdown which was the first one i believe were scored by new new players it, it was and um you know auburn looked at the team last year they uh determined that wide receiver was a position that needed the most upgrade uh they went out and took um or replaced seven of nine of scholarship players at receiver uh brought in one of the most uh, talented classes uh, in the country in the 24 class uh got three transfers in and that group has been the star of uh, fall camp and spring going back to spring practice and it showed the first day uh that 451 passing yards that auburn had saturday is the second most in school history Oh, uh, so that tells you a little bit about the direction this team is going and how maybe you freezes offense is finally starting to take off a little bit. And like you said, it is Alabama A&M, but uh, it is a good sign, I think. Yeah, I mean, because look, I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm going to compare uh, UC Davis with Alabama a and I'm not going to go down there, but uh, Cal didn't exactly have an easy go at it with UC Davis. So uh, playing both non-FBS programs and one of one of the teams looked, like they were playing a, a preseason game, you know, a regular season yeah. game against a preseason team. And the other team uh, struggled for most of the game, or at least the first part of the game. And look, you, you never know how the coaches are going to coach these first games. And Cal, you know, there's a lot of newness to what's going on. They're going to the ACC and all that. And, you know, are they really showing you all their bullets against UC Davis? But then again, it was close enough. I did hear that they struggled a little bit with – you know, just getting going, which happens. No preseason in college football. But still, just looking at those two first games, you would think, wow, Auburn certainly looks like they're humming on all cylinders where Cal uh, seems to be a little bit behind. Before you even uh, got into these first games, what did you think when you looked at the schedule, saw Cal there, and uh, and, and thought about what, what, what kind of opponent that was going to be for Auburn? Well, I knew they had one of the best running backs in the country, Jay Knott. I, I know he got a little banged up with his ankle, but supposedly he's ready to go for Auburn, which doesn't surprise me. He's a pretty tough kid. And, uh, you know, you can go back to last year. Auburn went out there. Um, it was a really, you know, slog of a game, I'd call it. Um, Auburn needed a really late drive to come out with a 14-10 to 10, 10 win. Uh, Rivaldo That's Fairweather, right. the tight end, uh, had that uh, had a big catch, I think, on – fourth down maybe to keep the drive going if not mistaken and then of course caught the touch the the winning touchdown too so um a very competitive game last year important road win for auburn i thought and um you know i think auburn's taken some steps to improve their team this year but i try not to put too much in the game one because you know auburn wants to get people excited they want to show off these new receivers this new passing game wants people to you know they're, they're trying to impress folks and their fans and get to get people you know, after three straight losing seasons, a little bit more uh, fired up about Auburn football. Cal may be looking, hey, we're not going to show much. We're going to, yeah. um, you know, we're going to play some conservative and just uh, get down to Auburn, see if we can pull a big upset. So I don't read too much into that opening week of, of games from those two teams. 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I remember that game too, the one from last year. That was uh, that that was a, quite a uh, battle, a uh, defensive battle for sure. But um, it was also you just got the feeling that there was a lot of it, it, it's sort of one of those typical early season games, though, as well. Even though it was the second game of the season for mm-hmm. Auburn, I believe. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what it was for Cal, but uh, still, overall, uh, this is now going to be uh, what are we into now for Hugh? This is only a second year, so again, right. even even that was new for Auburn. We didn't really know what to expect, so this is a completely different Auburn team that Cal is going to be taking a look at this year because Justin Wilcox has been there for quite a while. Even though I think they have a staff change or two, a key staff change or two, but. Um, yeah. So what do you think overall? And what did you think coming into week one anyway, even though week one, we know what, what it is, but what did you think about the off season compared to last off season? Well, it definitely was better. You know, uh, you freeze went out and signed this number eight class in the country, uh, which is something Auburn needed, you know, very badly. Uh, they'd really struggled to recruit and to bring in talented players at the end of the Gus Malzahn reign. And certainly during Brian Harson's uh, two years, uh, Auburn's recruiting really tanked. Uh, so that was really big uh, for this program. They went out and signed 16 uh, transfers. You know, I mentioned the wide receiver room got a big, big upgrade. Uh, also put a, a, a lot of work into helping out the offensive line and trying to surround Peyton Thorne with better players uh, instead of going out there and, and, and investing a whole bunch of money in a new quarterback and just trying to make everybody around Peyton Thorne uh, better as he returns for his second year after transfer to Michigan State last year. And then defensively, um, you know, lost uh, some dudes in the front seven, uh, but have recruited really well, uh, brought in four interior defensive linemen as transfers, uh, brought in some linebacker help, uh, brought in another pass rusher out of the transfer portal. So uh, they've really helped themselves up front, um, I-, I feel like, in the portal. And uh, they rotated a ton of defensive linemen in that first game. And they're going to rotate six or seven uh, D tackles and nose tackles all season long. Yeah, let's take a look at the uh, our lads depth chart as we uh, start going over some of these key players because the defense compared to the offense. I mean, the offense. I mean, I could look at uh, as far as name players. I mean, I could, we could talk. About, well, yeah, let's just put this over here. So, you know, we know who some of these guys are. We know who Peyton Thorne is. We know who Jarquez Hunter is. We know who Rivaldi Fairweather is. So, the, the, but then again, you talk about these freshmen and these transfers and. It just looks like the offense on paper is what's going to really, you know, be the dangerous part of this Auburn team. Like we saw in week one, Uh, the defense, on the other hand, the only recognizable name for me is Eugene Asante. He's the guy that, and I don't know if he's the leader of the team, but uh, the fact is, is that, like you said, that this really, and and look at all this, Look, look at this orange here even though they're starters there's only three in orange orange meaning new freshmen right. or transfers it's a lot on the defensive side so uh, it may take some time but this is really where auburn's gonna have to decide uh whether or not they're gonna be a winning team or not on this side of the ball right yes i mean that, that's a big part of it they had to replace four or five stars in the secondary um but they, they were fortunate that they signed a big class of defensive backs last year in this past season so they got some young guys in there they're gonna have to step up and play I think Jaron Thompson, the transfer from Texas, started over 30 games at Texas. Um, uh, so having a guy like him at safety with all that experience uh, really helps solidify things back there. But they're very thin, uh, can not afford any major injuries in the secondary. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I think um, as you freeze moves forward into his tenure here, you know he wants to build this class through recruiting and not through the transfer portal. So if things go well, you're going to see Auburn taking less and less transfers each year, I feel like. Um, 16 this year, maybe need a dozen next year. They're, right now, they're, they're, their class is ranked number five in the country, and they have the number one class for 2026. So uh, you can see where their recruiting wow. is really uh, starting to take off under under Coach Freeze. And, um, you know, I think his plan is to try to stack those top 10, top five classes on top of each other and get Auburn back where it's competing for championships on a on a regular basis. Yeah, because that makes a lot of sense. You don't want to live in the transfer portal. You, right. you, if you do a really good job of recruiting, it, it seems like what you're saying is the plan is is to recruit like hell, like they're doing, and then within a couple of years, once those classes start to get older and they start contributing more on the field, then you don't need as many transfers, and you'd rather have those players that you're right. coaching up 
from the moment they step on the field as freshmen or on the practice field as freshmen. So, yeah, um, I, I think if you're signing a, a national top 100 player or a five star, you don't find many of those players in, in the transfer portal, right? No. Uh, but you can get them in recruiting and you can get them in your program for three or four years, uh, which is a lot different than going and getting a, a guy for just a year or two. So uh, that's the way Freeze is trying to build it. But he inherited a really uh, bad roster, one of the worst rosters in the last 25 years of, of me covering uh, Auburn football or, or me following Auburn football. So it, there was a lot of work to do. Well, it must have really been a good, even though they lost that last game and, and his last two games, of course, um, the New Mexico State game was the classic look ahead. And then they lose to Alabama in a game that, and in a tough. play that yeah. will always live in, in that uh, rivalry's uh, history. The yeah. fact is, is that at some point that does become a positive that we beat them. We really beat them, but we, we we let them off the hook. And that was a team that almost won a national championship. So we're doing something right here. We've got some of the pieces here. And now all these new freshmen and all these new transfers, uh, there just has to be a little bit more optimism going into the season, I would believe. Oh, definitely. And um, definitely with the offense. That's where Auburn struggled for years, you know, uh, especially passing offense. They have not put many receivers in the NFL at all uh, in their history, really. Um, but you know, he went out and signed some top 100, you know, five-star caliber players in this last class. You, you saw it right away game one. And I think you're going to see Auburn try to light it up against California too. We'll see how that goes. Right. You know, it's a different uh, type of opponent and Peyton may not have as much time to throw and, and those receivers might not be as open. So uh, we'll see how, how that looks in game two. Yeah. Uh, but that's the plan. And Robert Lewis, I don't know how to mention his name, yeah. uh, but uh, he had a, a really nice career down in the Sun Belt with uh, Georgia State, I believe. Yes. And so he, they're expecting him to be a, a big part of the off of the passing game as well. Yeah, he's probably going to be your starting uh, slot. Uh, Malcolm Simmons, a freshman, started, but that's because they wanted to run a particular play just for him, and he caught the first pass of the game, and also had a long uh, touchdown reception too. He's he's going to be a great player. Uh, but um, they they love Robert Lewis. They love what Keandre Lambert Smith from Penn State has brought to that receiver core. Both those guys have been starters, but they've been leaders in a really young group, and um, uh, they're going to be key parts of this passing attack this season. Okay, and then uh, you mentioned the offensive line. So uh, talk about the line in general because uh, it looks uh, – they're again, I would think that they're a lot more comfortable with the way that this group is uh, put together. Um, do they have any – stars or potential stars on the line or not yet well you know connor lewis center you know he started as a true freshman last year and anytime you do that in the sec that's probably a good sign and, and i he, i thought he played really well in the first game i think he's going to be a, a sunday player eventually um and, and dylan wade he started left tackle last year moved to guard for this season's more natural position uh, i think he had four um uh, not down blocks in the first game. So that was a great start for him. And then Tyler Johnson, he actually got the start over Percy Lewis. They they sort of rotated in and out there at left tackle. That battle's ongoing okay. um, from camp. And he's just a redshirt freshman, super talented, really long, looks like a left tackle. Um, one of Auburn's better pass blockers right now and still building up strength to become, you know, a solid SEC run blocker too, but definitely built like a left tackle. So you're going to see that uh, continue throughout the first part of this season as they start try to settle on it. And then the one thing I think that Jake Thornton, Auburn's offensive line, does a little bit different uh, than a lot of offensive line coaches I've covered. Uh, he rotates his offensive line uh, a lot more. So okay. he'll play, even in a big game, he'll he'll play um, three or four backups, rotate them, rotate them in for a series or two uh, just to give them experience and just to give some fresh legs on the field. All right. And by the way, I didn't mention this. Uh, so uh, the offensive coordinator, uh, Derek Nix, he's new. Yes. Uh, so what was the deal there? W why do they have a new offensive coordinator? Well, I think it goes back to trying to build a better offense and, and better team around Peyton Thorne. Um, last year, uh, you freeze brought in a, a coordinator to, to run the, run the show while he could concentrate on recruiting. It didn't work out at all. I, I think they were, of two different minds and uh, okay. you could tell there was there was friction from the start there um 
So he brought in his guys, right? Derek Nix, he's worked with for a long time. Uh, he elevated uh, Kent Austin to quarterback's coach, another guy that uh, has been with him a long time. So they know his offense. They can run his offense. It gives him a chance to still spend a lot of time recruiting and to call a lot of plays. But now he's got people he can trust to come up and help with the game planning and, and, and put things together and coach players the right way. So it was all about sort of um, – you know, recognizing he made a mistake there with his with his first um, hire there, offensive coordinator, uh, at least for his offense, and uh, sort of saying it right and setting Auburn on this path to where uh, they're a little bit more explosive offensively. And the two guys that are uh, the holdovers, the two skill position uh, holdovers that really have the most um, star power, uh, of course, being Hunter and Fairweather. So yeah. any reason to believe that they're not going to be a major part of this offense? Oh, no. Um, you know, um, Auburn wanted to show up his passing game against Alabama A&M, but uh, they run a lot of RPO. And if teams want to put an extra man in the box to stop Jarquez Hunter, then they are going to continue to throw it, right? But eventually teams are going to understand that Auburn can, can do those things. And that's going to open up opportunities for Jarquez. And, you know, I think um, Rivaldo, the tight end, became Auburn's top playmaker. Uh, receiving playmaker last year because they struggled so much at the receiver position. Yeah. Uh, now he can he can be kind of the guy that surprises people. Like you you got to account for all these big fast receivers. Oh gosh, here's this tight end who's six six and can uh, catch the ball and, and and is really good in the red zone. So uh, yeah, you're going to see them use him uh, a lot this season, and and I think he's going to be more effective and have the ability to make more big plays just because he's got better players around him. Uh, who is the number two? Do they have a definite number two running back? Yeah, Demari Austin uh, would be yeah. that guy. This is his uh, third year in the program. He's a junior, uh, very, very talented running back. I thought he pushed our quest for that starting job uh, during the offseason. Oh. And then they've got a really talented um, uh, number three guy um, that uh, is one of Auburn's best players in there. Uh, they've been working really hard just to get uh, Jeremiah Cobb the ball in different ways. A good good receiver out of the backfield. They got him returning kicks. You know, just just a playmaker. They want to get on the field as much as possible, even though they've got that really good depth at running back. Okay. So they're all set to go if both of them are back next season. Hunter moves on to the NFL. Uh, speaking of moving on to the NFL or moving on, uh, period, uh, Hank Brown uh, was the uh, backup, uh, number one backup in the game. Is Hank Brown, do you think right now, is he believed to be the starting quarterback next year? Does he have the lead on that? Or do you think at this point it, it'll be a, a competition or maybe even there'll be another quarterback, another veteran that will come in here? Or do they like these guys? They don't need to bring in a veteran. Oh, I think it'll be a competition. I, I do think they're going to bring in some guys. Um, okay. But I do think Hank Brown, you know, he, he won that number two job. And uh, that gives him, to me, a, a lead going into uh, the next offseason. So um, <clears throat> they're trying to sign one of the top quarterbacks in the country. His name is Deuce Knight. He's currently committed to Notre Dame. He's the number two de uh, dual threat quarterback in the country, was down for the game last weekend. And we could have some news on him here in the next week or two, I think. I think Auburn's put themselves in pretty good shape there. Would not be surprised if they look in the portal uh, for some help too, a more experienced portal. But I think that depends on how these guys like Hank Brown and uh, like Walker White, the freshman they brought in this year, how they develop uh, during the season and, and see how things go. But um, I do think that there's going to be a big competition for that job next spring and uh, next fall camp. And there'll probably be some new faces involved in that too. So you mentioned that uh, on the offensive line, Lou and Johnson, they definitely have good futures. Um, give me a player that you would con be considered like a breakout candidate <laughs> this season. Somebody that uh, hasn't done either done anything uh, or somebody that uh, had, a, had a little bit of a, a, an opportunity last year, but now he's really going to take that next step this season on offense. Offense. Well, you know, the young wide receivers, of course, step up, the freshmen, uh, but they weren't here last year. <clears throat> I, I would say Tyler Johnson, who redshirted, would be one, uh, certainly, if he can grab that full-time starting job. Um, every Every other position, to me, offensively, is covered by either a freshman or a newcomer. Are, are guys that are back that, that started or played a lot. I yeah, can't think of anywhere yeah. where, where you've got like a, a third or fourth year guy who maybe hasn't played much. Well, no, I take that back. I'd say um, uh, Jeremiah Wright, who um, he has played defensive line, offensive line, flipped back and forth a couple of times. 
He's finally settled in on offense. He won the right uh, right guard spot in the in the fall. So he is a guy that um, is a fifth year junior that is really finally getting his opportunity, and I thought played really well um, in the first game. So <clears throat> there's a guy that's uh, stepped up, um, stuck it out, and uh, you know it's sort of paying off for him this year on offense. Okay, let's switch on over to the defensive side. And again, this is where there are definitely more questions. So, uh, would Asante does is he considered the leader of the defense? Definitely. The um, he, he's a great player, of course, and also an emotional and you know oh, just yeah. a, a guy you can count on to be there. And what they've done uh, around Eugene is bringing a lot more guys at linebacker. They brought in, I think, two or three transfers at linebacker. Signed a really talented linebacker uh, class to Marcus Riddick is one of the most talented players on the team, just a true freshman. You're going to see him play more and more as the season goes on. But, um, yeah, they've done a great job there. Uh, Dorian Mousy uh, from Duke transfer played a whole lot in that first game at that uh, middle linebacker position. Uh, Robert Woodyard is another guy. We talked about guys who have stuck it out. This is his third year. I don't know if he's played a snap his first two years. Uh, he had to deal with an injury coming out of high school had to get sort of in shape, uh, lose some weight, you know, and just get into college football shape. It took him a while, but um, he looked good out there in his first action, I thought. And um, he's a guy I think Auburn is going to uh, depend on as a um, key back up there at the linebacker position and, and, and part-time starter probably. So uh, I think um, the front seven that really bolstered uh, through the portal and through recruiting and then the back end, uh, just really thin. Got some quality starters. Um, Kante Scott's. this is his third year uh, after coming from uh, junior college. Great punt returner, uh, terrific defensive back. He's one starting corner, Kai and Lee, who they flipped from Ohio State uh, a year ago, came in and started as a freshman. You know, so you feel like they've got quality there. It's just the backups are completely unproven. True freshman, redshirt freshman guys who just have not played a lot of football so far. Okay, so in that secondary, who how is the biggest upside? Would it be Key? Would it be Lee? Probably uh, Kai and Lee uh, and our Keontae Scott, you know, both those guys are really talented. Uh, Keontae was Auburn starting nickel the last two years, and it takes a special talent to play that position, I feel like, because you got to support the run and also be able to cover a really talented receivers in the slot, too. So uh, that can be a really, really um, special position if you can get a good one. I think Keontae can do that. And of course, he's playing cornerback this year. Uh, but I'd probably say Kai and Lee probably has the, up, the highest upside of anybody in, in the um, secondary. It just needs to be a little bit more mentally tough, I would say. Okay. You know, the bounce, you know how cornerbacks go. You know, you got to forget the last play and bounce oh, back. Yeah. So I think that's something he's still working through as a true sophomore in just his second season at Auburn. Who is the top pass rusher on the team? Do they have one? I would say that's an area they really worked hard to improve too. Um, Jalen McLeod was a transfer last year and was Auburn's best pass rusher from the edge. But that was it. He was the only guy they had, and they had to play him a lot of snaps. He got tired. I uh, got banged up. Uh, so they went out and uh, brought in, um, uh, what was the kid's name? Um, Kieron Crawford uh, from Arkansas State. Uh, this guy was like a former basketball player, only played like a year or so of high school football, so he's kind of unknown coming out. But if you just see him, you walk out of practice, you see him, he looks like a football player, if you know what I mean. So um and he's been terrific during camp so that gives them a couple of really talented experienced pass rushers and they brought in two really talented guys uh in the 24 class uh jamonte waller was a the guy they flipped from florida late who is who's going to be a, a really good pass rusher and already is but uh, he's just a true freshman out there okay and then they brought in some more guys in different spots keldrick falk um started as a true freshman last year uh, he looks incredible uh, this season. You know, he's up to 290-ish pounds and 6'5", 6'6", frame. Just big, strong, got a great work ethic. Uh, he is a playmaker. And they've got some guys, I think, inside. Um, Amaris Williams is another true freshman that can play defensive end, can slide into D-tackle. He is going to be an NFL um, defensive lineman one day, just a freshman this year. Malik blocked another true freshman, has sack in the first game. Uh, was really good. He's the younger brother, Marcus Harris, who started for three years for Auburn. So uh, sort of got that in his blood there. And, um, you know, they've got some dudes. they got some young dudes. And they went out and signed four transfers to sort of give them that experience and that ex uh, depth there just as the young guys come along. Yeah. Uh, one of those is uh, Bleedy from uh, Indiana. Yep. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, Bleedy's a good-looking kid. Um, he's one of those mature kids. Got a wife. Uh, got oh. a, a child. You know, he's 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 like I'm here because because of my family. You know, I want to uh, turn myself an NFL player, and I'm going to work my tail off to do that. So uh, that's what what type of attitude and, and and mental toughness and physicalness you're getting from Bleedy right now. Uh, Isaiah Rakes. Um, they held him out because of a little ankle injury in the first game. He's a transfer from Texas A and M. Uh, where he played for DJ Dirk and the defensive coordinator. Uh, but he is cleared for California, so you'll probably see him, if not start at nose guard, at least be uh, in a big part of the rotation there. Uh, he's been a, a really good performer in camp, too. Auburn's uh, pretty big and physical up front with, with these transfers. So, um, and again, same thing, a lot of transfers, some freshmen. Uh, so the question is not so easy, but um, – if you did have, and again, we, we looked at Lee as far as maybe somebody that had the biggest upside in the secondary. Um, what about up front in the front seven? Do you have someone that uh, might have a breakthrough year uh, this year from those guys? Well, Keldrick Falk has probably the biggest upside, right? Uh, true freshman started last year. He looks like an absolute beast, to be honest with you, this year. Uh, a, a newcomer, I mentioned Mars Williams, is a special player. Uh, everybody knows he's going to be a special player. He He's one of those guys that... Um, you know he's going to be the defensive end because he's going to be 285, 290 pounds, but it's still quick enough to be uh, an outside linebacker and rush the passer like that. Just uh, just has that natural ability. Uh, so those are a couple of guys. Um, and then I mentioned Robert Woodyard is the guy who I think yep. um, has really stuck it out and come on and kind of surprised people. A guy that um, you know during the off season I wouldn't have circled as, as as a guy expected to be a big part of this defense, but has has definitely earned it during fall camp. Now I noticed taking a look at special teams that this gentleman was not kicking. It was right. this one. So yes. what happened there? Yeah, Alex McPherson uh, was. I don't know if he was a freshman All American. I think he might have been a freshman All American last year. Made all of his field goal attempts, all of his extra point attempts um, as a redshirt freshman last year. Uh, during spring practice, he missed a lot of spring with a, a sore hamstring. And then after spring, or, or maybe during it, he got an illness. And it took him a long time to figure out exactly what it was. It's some sort of um, uh, issue with his um, digestive system. You know, I, I don't know exactly what it was. I, I don't want to speculate. But it just took him a while, and he lost a ton of weight. Okay. Um, and, you know, kickers aren't usually the biggest dudes to begin with, right? So um, they, have, they have figured out what it was. They have got him on the path to recovery. He's returned to practice. He's kicking now. Uh, but he has not been cleared to play yet. So uh, they think he'll be available within the first three or four games. Uh, but fortunately for Auburn, they were able to add Towns Magoo late in last year's class. He's a true freshman <clears throat> from right here in Auburn, Alabama, hometown kid. And they had to fight for him because he had some scholarship offers, and Auburn was offering him an invited walk-on opportunity. And, of course, he knew that Alex McPherson was going to be the kicker for at least the next couple of years. But he came in. In the spring game, I think he made seven. I think he was seven of seven on field goals and had a 50, is that 58 yarder to win the spring game? Wow. Mistaken. So he just went off in the spring game and uh, has taken uh, op, you know, every opportunity, taken advantage of it, uh, made his only field goal attempt in the game. I think he had seven or eight uh, touchbacks on kickoff. So Auburn's very fortunate. They have some depth there at the kicking position and, and Towns will be Auburn's kicker until Alex is ready to come back. Well, that's interesting. Uh, but he did decide to sign with Auburn nonetheless. Yes. So he knows what he's up what he's up to, but I'm sure he's gonna have a lot of uh, you know, in his ear about uh, you really wanna stay here and wait? Come on. <laughs> uh, well, well, I mean the way he's playing right now, he's gonna play in some some capacity. There's, there's oh no, yeah. Yeah. No keeping him off the field. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think the plan was the red shirt this year, but I don't I don't know if that plan's gonna gonna work out. And he's got the name too. Yes, so, Charles Magoo, you, yeah, that's perfect. Yes, yep. absolutely. So that'll work out really well. Uh, okay, and any injury notes at all? Uh, I don't see anybody down here uh, yeah. along the list or anything like that. So uh, are they relatively healthy? Yeah, and you know the SEC for conference games now is going to provide an injury report. Uh, that's something new for this year. So they'll oh. be putting out um, starting on Wednesday, I think, up into a couple hours for game time. Uh, they'll have a report for each team that's playing an SEC game for probable, expected, out, you know, uh, okay. kind of the NFL model there. On uh, their website? That, on the SEC website? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know exactly how they're going to put it out, but yes, it's going to be available to the media and the public. And, and cool. um, you know, I think that's uh, for gambling purposes and you not think? to have yeah, people. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Shame, shame, shame. But um, <laughs> injuries for Auburn, um, Isaiah Rakes, they did hold him out for the ankle. He should be back this week. Uh, I know Champ Anthony, uh, their nickel is a little banged up in the game, but is at practice uh, yesterday. I'm trying to think there's another player that's banged up, but he was at practice yesterday. So as far as I know, uh, there are no major injuries uh, with this Auburn team right now, uh, other than potentially Alex McPherson, who you know we yeah. know about, and we know he's not uh, been cleared to return yet, but he should be back here in the next couple of games. And it's it's a shame because you mentioned um, how Magook is – coming in as a walk-on and from what we're hearing they're, they're doing away with the walk-on yeah and that's just i mean i don't know why i don't know everything about it but um that's that's a shame i mean how yeah. many walk-ons have made uh you know they, they're living on just it's right. sort of like a college free agent in the nfl it's like taking that away you know it's, right. it's just it's just really difficult to think that it, that's going to happen it has changed though on NIL. So walk-ons still get NIL, right? So he's not he's not really a walk-on in that capacity. And they I think they are gonna expand um, rosters. Yes. Sort of yes. Allow more players. So you're gonna yep. have those type players still on your team. So I don't know if they figured out exactly how it's gonna work yet. We'll we'll see. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah, hopefully they'll they'll make sure that these walk-ons definitely uh, find a way because chances are, you know, I don't know what that means other than maybe they just have to wind up going somewhere else instead of walking on to your universe. Cause there's just, well, I have to, I, you're not allowing me to walk on. You don't have the extra scholarship. I have to go, even though, like you said, there are going to be more scholarships available, Right. but it sounds to me like that's still going to be an issue, but we'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. All right. So as far as the schedule is concerned, uh, after Cal, uh, things are uh, looking pretty decent. I mean, it's not a very difficult first four games, there is Cal and Arkansas, but they're both at home. All four games are at home. Uh, and then things start getting difficult. Uh, matter of fact, uh, four really tough ones in a row. Uh, and three yeah. of them in a row on the road uh, in yeah. between a bye week. So very important for Auburn to get off to a good start. All this newness, uh, so far so good. Um, uh, what do you think? What's your uh, – did your prediction what, – what, did you have a prediction before the season began? Um, I didn't make an official prediction, but my thought was, you know, Auburn's had three consecutive losing seasons. Let's, That's just get, to, let's yeah. get to seven and five at least, right? Yes. And in that and get some momentum going the other direction. But they have a chance. They should be 4-0, right, if things go well. Should be. I mean, not guaranteed, right? They lost no. to Mexico State last year, so you never know. That, that could set up a really good home game against Oklahoma. That's Oklahoma's first ever SEC road game, I believe. So you're talking about Jordan Hare Stadium, really fired up for that game. Yeah. So and we'll then, see how that goes. And then, the uh, and then they, Georgia. <laughs> they spend the whole month of October on the road, right? So uh, can they maybe pull an upset at Oklahoma? Can they beat a Kentucky or a Missouri on the road? I, I don't know. And then, you know, back you get back in, in November and you've got Vanderbilt at home. You've got, um, uh, what is it, UL Monroe at home, Texas A&M at home. And I think you're going on the road to Alabama where, where you have it once since 2010. But it is a manageable schedule. I, I broke it down. Six games you should win. Yep. Um, two games you're probably not going to win on the road in Georgia and on the road of Alabama. And then four more games that are sort of games that you might be able to win. And one of those is Oklahoma at home at Jordan Hare Stadium at the end of September. So uh, that's going to be the first big one, I, I feel like, this season. Yeah. I mean, if, look, if Auburn has a good a good team this year, uh, they do have a, a schedule that says that seven wins uh, is definitely a, a manageable goal, if not sure. more, <laughs> if they're a good team, because you do get Oklahoma and Texas A&M at home, uh, including all those other games we just talked about at home. Yep. It's a lot of good home opportunities. And uh, and then a couple of the road games that you would think have the best chance, just if you could just split that Missouri, Kentucky right. uh, road situation uh, anything more than that would obviously be a bonus, but having to go to Georgia and Alabama in the same year, uh, that, that's the difficult part. But then again, playing them at home ain't no kick rock either. So no. uh, if you're going to play them, hey, you might as well play them on the road. Uh, it's going to be tough anyway. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah, so far so good. The season uh, gets off to a really nice start, even no matter who the opponent was. Uh, even though there was a lot of crazy uh, shutouts in the SEC this past week, 
uh, and again, it was a lot of, uh, I went over the whole schedule this past week and there was some just typical blowouts all over college football. Oh, yeah. uh, but uh, the SEC, those shutouts, I think there were like six shutouts or something like that in the SEC in week one, which is, I don't think I'd, I've seen that happen before, but still uh, it's uh, maybe going to tell us that the competition is, is really going to heat up real soon. And, um, and again, uh, I think this is going to be a really cool season to follow Auburn football. It seems like they're headed in the right track. If you're an Auburn fan, I got to imagine you're getting real excited about the future, uh, with, uh, the right coach, uh, and, uh, and all the recruiting news is positive. So yeah, I guess the, the next step is even though Peyton Thorne's a nice quarterback, I guess to, to think about a championship type team, just like when they won a championship with Cam is to get that championship yeah. quarterback is to get that. And maybe it's the guy that uh, is, you just said, maybe there's news in a week. Maybe that's the guy. I mean, who knows, but sooner or later they're going to get that guy. Uh, and when they do, maybe in the next few years, Auburn will go back to being a national championship contender. So Brian, appreciate it. I look forward to uh, uh, calling on you at least uh, once or twice this season. So we can talk about a specific game of the week. And uh, again, uh, follow uh, your work over at rivals. Do you have your own show, your own podcast? Oh, we do. It's called The Rundown uh, at AuburnSports.com, and uh, we do it every week. Um, uh, right now, because uh, Freeze's press conference on Monday, we're going to do it on Monday after his. It's usually on a Tuesday, but yes, uh, check us out uh, on all the platforms there uh, with our podcast. Does that include YouTube? Uh, no, it does not. We, we do it. Um, yeah, we, we Apple, go to- Apple, streaming, and yep, all that. Yep, okay. Yep. All right. Well, one step at a time. That's Brian, right. Brian, appreciate it. We'll talk to you again uh, real soon. Hey, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.